621. This is David Knight, and uh, we are here live in Austin, but Alex Jones is not here. Actually, Alex is working on the next big blockbuster, the next installment of the Obama deception. You know, it's very important, these documentaries. People ask why we cover Hollywood, why we review films, why we do documentaries. In a documentary, you can lay out the facts in a way that you just don't have time to cover it on the news. So we can cover what's happening, and it's important that you know what's going on, keep your ear to the ground, and keep informed. But when you really want to understand what's behind the news, when you really want to get the broader and deeper picture, nothing does that like a documentary. So we're all about documentaries here. As a matter of fact, uh, we've got uh, an exclusive on State of Mind, which is uh, a new documentary coming out from the people that brought us the uh, Noble Lie, which was a expose of the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, State of Mind, the Psychology of Mind Control. And if you pre-book that right now, you get a free copy of The American Dream. It's a great cartoon version that explains uh, what's going on with our banking system, how we got into this mess, uh, follows the money trail. It does it in a very fun, very informative way for people. It's a great way to wake people up. But, you know, the mind control thing is, is also very important. It's important for people to understand that this is something that is not just, uh, you know, tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff. This is something that's been going on for a long time. It's been uh, discussed. It's been released in classified documents that have been declassified. Uh, the government's been working on this since the 50s, at least. And uh, this is something that is in our second hour. We're going to have on the show Dr. William Pepper. And he is actually defending Sirhan Sirhan. You might think that's an open and shut case. Actually, it isn't. There's some new evidence that was brought to light by some uh, advances in technology in 2004. They discovered a, an audio recording that uh, had not really been analyzed before. And they didn't really have the technology to analyze it before uh, 2004. But with this new technology, with this new recording, they heard that there were not just eight gunshots that is what uh, could be held from Sirhan Sirhan's gun, but actually 13. And uh, so we're going to be talking to Dr. Pepper, and he was also involved in a trial of James Earl Ray, the accused assassin of Martin Luther King. And uh, he never had a trial because he confessed. Uh, seems like they always manage to get people to have a confession, uh, plea bargain them down to a life in prison or something like that. Uh, so they don't have to have a trial, so there's no discovery or discussion of the evidence. And that's what happened in James Earl Ray's case. And he never had a trial, but this was the trial that he never had. And uh, it was done as a television trial with Dr. Pepper, and the King family wanted to have this trial done. And we'll be talking to him about uh, the revelations of that. We've also got Paul Joseph Watson coming up in the third hour. And we're going to be talking about this breaking case of Michael Hastings, in L.A., and it has all the hallmarks, in my opinion, of a uh, bomb and not a simple car accident. It just doesn't look like uh, any kind of car accident, any kind of fire. Fiery crashes are very rare. You typically don't see the engine ejected at a 90-degree angle. There's a picture of it up there on the screen. You don't see that the kind of damage to the front end that's going to cause the fire to start. Fires in cars that that are fatal typically happen because someone crashes it into a wall and gets pinned into it and the engine catches fire. Well, the engine was ejected. Uh, there wasn't that much damage done to the front end. And the engine was ejected at kind of a 90-degree angle from, from where they were. That's not typical in crashes, and it's not typical of a new Mercedes. Uh, they, they really do have some pretty good technology in terms of keeping the engines in the cars, believe it or not. That's kind of where they uh, hang their bailiwick is on the safety issue, and they do it as good as anybody else, if not better. So we're going to be talking to Paul about that in the third hour. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.
The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, filling in for Alex. I'll be here the first two hours. The third hour, we're going to have Jakari Jackson and Paul Joseph Watson. Now, uh, we're going to go through the news here in just a little bit. But, you know, I actually... It's amazing what we do for our listeners. I actually threw myself on the sword last night and went to see World War Z. Yeah, I actually, actually paid to see that. And uh, we're going to have uh, Alex talking about his anticipation of it because he had read the book. He knew what was uh, uh, the, the book was about. Actually, uh, Brad Pitt and uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio got into a bidding war as to who is going to be able to uh, film that. And Brad Pitt won, for better or worse. And uh, they actually made something called a movie out of that, I guess you could call it. But uh, Alex talked about the themes that were in the book. He talked about early releases of the script. And I can give you a review. Um, I'll give you, I'll talk about the political aspects of it. I'll tell you right now that, you know, there's, there's movies that you see that you really like. Um, and then there's movies that you see and you say, you know, I could have waited to see that and, and seen it on uh, Netflix or on cable. And then there's movies that like, how did I waste two hours of my life? Well, World War Z is in that last category. I want my two hours of my life back. Not, not even the money that I wasted. I just want the time I wasted back. It was, uh, it was not even entertaining from the standpoint of an action film or a horror film or a suspense film or a science fiction film. It didn't, it didn't deliver on any of those aspects. And uh, it was just kind of, uh, if you've seen the previews, you've seen the special effect shots. You've seen the mass of humanity piling on top of each other like a bunch of ants. And that kind of sums up the whole attitude of the movie towards mankind. But uh, we'll talk about the political underscoring of that. And that's why we do film reviews is because it's important to understand how powerful film is because it acts on not just an intellectual level, but it also acts on a subliminal level. You know, film is so effective because it manipulates our emotions at the same time that we're looking at uh, what's on, on the... Um, screen, uh, movie, uh, soundtracks are so important, so much of a part of manipulating your emotions, but there's, it's just a very visceral entertainment medium. And, uh, it really is able to deliver very deep messages to you, very subliminal messages. So it's important to take a step back and to look objectively at what is actually in these films. And we're going to be doing that a lot more here at InfoWars. And uh, Alex has um, a film review comparing Superman to World War Z. We're going to play that at the bottom of the hour. And I'll follow up and, and tell you how they changed it from what was anticipated. But we've got uh, in the news, of course, we're still looking at the Hastings uh, death that happened in L.A. The FBI, these are some of the headlines on InfoWars. Uh, the FBI is saying that there's no investigation involving journalist Michael Hastings. Well, I guess which investigation are they talking about? Are they talking about... Uh, the investigation where he tweeted just hours before he died that he was uh, being investigated by the FBI? Or are they talking about they're not going to investigate the uh, strange appearance of the car accident? It's probably the latter. Uh, Ted Cruz is launching a national petition against the Gang of Eights bill. He said, uh, this is, uh, have to stop this immigration bill, he said. Uh, they're going to grant amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants. You know, there's kind of a pattern of behavior that you see with the government They'll go in and do the illegal, as Henry Kissinger said, the illegal we do immediately. The unconstitutional takes a little bit longer. They'll go in over and over again, violate the law. And we're seeing that happening now with the uh, NDAA. They've released a new version of the NDAA for 2014. And what they're doing is they're putting in provisions. We've always been upset about this indefinite detention provision, Section 1023. They're now proposing another section that is going to give them legal cover for the kind of data collection, data mining, uh, data storage that uh, we all know that they've been doing for a long time, secretly, illegally, unconstitutionally. And so now they're going to pass a law to do that. Same thing is happening with illegal immigration. We know that it's illegal, but they're trying to pretend that it's not illegal. They do it even though it's against the law. They don't enforce the laws. They break the laws. And then eventually what they do to cover themselves, they amend the laws. And that's what we see is really happening with the Illegal Immigration Act right now. Uh, McClatchy, Washington Bureau reports that government could use metadata to map your every move. Could use? <laughs> They've been doing that for a very long time. 
Uh, we've got another one here. Lawyers are eyeing the NSA data as a treasure trove for evidence in murder and divorce cases. And I guess you could make the case that if the government has information that's in a criminal case, if they have it in their possession, they should surrender that. And uh, But they're assuming that uh, once they have taken our private information, once they've stolen our private information unconstitutionally, illegally, then that information is now secure and belongs to them. We've got uh, 25,000 dead bumblebees discovered in Oregon. This is the largest documented bumblebee death in the western U.S., according to a conservation biologist, Rich Hatfield. They said they've never seen any kind of die-off of bumblebees on this scale before. And they're aware of a pesticide application in the vicinity, but have not yet identified the active ingredients. Well, there's some people that have done some research on that. Uh, and we've seen in other cases, people making cases that it is uh, Roundup and some other uh, chemicals and pesticides. We'll see what conclusions they come to. Seems like uh, Monsanto, though, is kind of a special uh, protected Species. It's almost like uh, you know an endangered species protection list that they've got. Nothing that uh, Monsanto can do is is basically uh, ever called into question. And then we've got um, this this uh, story here about uh, water. We've got um, a, a video that kind of lays this out. We're going to throw that in just a second. And uh, it's a story about um, uh, some people going before a water board and complaining about their cloudy water and foul tasting water and the uh, person who's there basically tells them uh, don't make unsubstantiated claims because we'll treat that as terrorism let's take a look at that video you might know, I think you're trying to answer your question look you guys have come up here and expressed concerns about water quality on several occasions brought us a stack of complaints. We called every one of them and said, do you have water problems? Do you want us to come test your water? Guess how many we got to say? I've got your test. report right here, so I know exactly. Yeah. How many? Is, is one, well, let, me, let me ask, is one phone call a sufficient investigation of such serious complaints? Well, we called them and said, do you want us to come down and test your water? No. Hmm. Were you called? Were anybody here well, called? Let me throw one thing out, out there just so you're aware. Okay, um, we take water quality very seriously, very, <laughs> very seriously. But you need to make sure that when you make water quality complaints, you have basis because federally, if there's no water quality issues, that can be considered under Homeland Security an act of terrorism. So, well, what, can you say that again, please? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. Get, uh, if, what, what I'm saying is if you've got concerns about your drinking water, that's very important. We take that very seriously. But under federal regulations, if you make allegations against the public water supply that are unfounded, then that can be considered under Homeland Security an act of terrorism because you're trying to alleged things. Who would the you be in this case, Mr. Mr. I'm, I'm Mr. Just, Smith? I'm just saying, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just saying okay, that's, good. Here. that's good. That's good. I, I hope you could hear that. The, the audio quality is not quite what we'd like to have, but it, but you could hear that. He says, uh, you got to be very careful because under federal regulations, I could call you a terrorist if, uh, you know, we do this. I, just don't question your masters. Uh, you know, you... you uh, you say something about the water quality. Uh, we've gone from uh, being ridiculed and being laughed at. Uh, back in North Carolina, we had some people at uh, Planet InfoWars that got together in social networking. That's our uh, InfoWars social networking site. They got together to decide they would do some activism back in North Carolina. And the first thing they decided they would do would be go down to uh, city council and talk to them about fluoridation of the water. And they were not only laughed at and cut off, they wouldn't allow them to run a piece that had been run by a local news crew talking about fluoridation and seriously taking a look at why it's been outlawed in European countries and other places and uh, 
Uh, they would not look at the health effects of that. They would not consider the idea as to whether or not, even if it was effective, do you really want to try to medicate people through the water supply? Is that the way that you deliver meds is through the water supply? So they not only laughed at them, but they toasted them and mocked them with a glass of tap water. And now we've got officials in Tennessee saying, if you come in and talk about the quality of your water, uh, I might just call you a terrorist. And he keeps throwing around the names of Homeland Security and federal laws as if that's supposed to uh, scare people. Well, you know, we got something uh, at the federal government. It's called the Constitution. And uh, you don't amend the Constitution by uh, passing a, an appropriations act for the military like the NDAA. You know, they didn't amend the Constitution with Section 1023 by passing a law. If the law is unconstitutional, it's still unlawful. And uh, all the assertions of that doesn't change. No matter how draconian they get, it doesn't change. It just shows that they are oath breakers and criminals if they violate the Constitution, especially when they pass a law. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now we'll remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. And we're going to have a, a very interesting guest coming up in the top of the next hour. We're going to have Dr. William Pepper. And this is a lawyer, a human rights lawyer, who defended uh, Martin Luther King and is trying to get a retrial for Sirhan Sirhan. There's some interesting new evidence about the trial of Sirhan Sirhan that came about about nine years ago with new technology. And so we're going to talk to Dr. Pepper about that. We're going to talk to him about the trial that was held for James Earl Ray that was never had, they never had a trial before for James Earl Ray because he just pleaded guilty. So they had a trial at the request of the King family. Dr. Pepper is a, a close friend of the King family and was a very good friend of Martin Luther King Jr. before he was killed. And they really wanted to get to the bottom of this because there was a lot of questions about the circumstances surrounding his death. Just as we see, there's a lot of circumstances and that are suspicious about the death of Michael Hastings in L.A. This is something we covered a couple of nights ago on the nightly news. It's something we talked a great deal about yesterday. It's something we're going to continue to talk about because the government is just coming out and doing things like tapping people's phones and, and breaking every kind of constitutional protection that we've got is just being ignored openly now by the government. We were looking at uh, the evidence of it the other day, and Rob Jacobson had a, a great comment, and he said, they just really don't care anymore. I mean, it used to be that the government did these types of things in secret that they're doing in open today, and they used to uh, try to hide when they violated the law, when they killed people. But now we've got books being written by a Pulitzer Prize-winning author, uh, The Way of the Knife, Mark Mazzetti just came out talking about how Obama and George Bush are using the Secret Service as well as, uh, not the Secret Service, but the, uh, uh, the CIA as well as military in ways that they've never used them before openly. And just assass open assassination against people. And we also have the NSA scandals as far as uh, the breaking tips of the iceberg now that we're starting to see. It's something that uh, we've known has been going on for quite some time, but now they're revealing little bits of it. Well, you know, it's not just the government doing things that are illegal and doing it in our face, but it's also the way that they're interacting with people. And as I said earlier in the show, I went to see World War Z last night, 
and just the us versus them mentality of the government elite. And, and that's really what they're focusing on in this movie. They're trying to set up a, uh, the idea that if you're part of the military, if you're part of the government, you're going to be taken care of. Everybody else is either helpless or they're kind of a rabid problem, a rabid disease, a virus. That's something that we've seen, a meme that we've seen for a long time from people uh, with the Gaia group. They basically posited this idea that Gaia is the spirit of the earth and a living organism. And as a living organism, humans are basically a destructive virus that at best needs to be contained, but it would be optimal if we could just wipe it out. And I have to say, that was really the feeling I got watching that movie last night, World War Z. But what comes from that kind of a mentality, a kind of us versus them, a kind of attitude that if you do something and you're part of the insider group, you're part of the official people with uniforms, you don't ever get called into question for anything you do. And we're going to be talking to somebody right after the break whose daughter, 11-year-old daughter, was tasered by police. How about that? The police couldn't handle 11-year-old girl. They had to taser her. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. 